Good morning from the Urban Supercharger in St. George. We are running a little bit late today. 6.53 already. We're supposed to be here almost an hour ago. But, well, it happens. Uh, we got 90%. So we used 5% since last night. And, uh, well, we got 25 minutes remaining, it says. Going only at 30 some kilowatts here. So we got to bring this up. 200% preferably as we're going on the long trip to Bryce Canyon today and probably need every little drop of juice we can get. This was just a short drive about five minutes or so from the resort to uh, this charger here this one here is on the way um, the other one the 150 kilowatt charger is, a, is is out of the way and since we are above or at 90 percent the 150 kilowatt charger wouldn't help us at all these here go 75 kilowatts and that's plenty because yeah, we only get like 30 kilowatts anyway. So um, no reason to go to the faster one. If this one's on the way, this is uh, uh, much better and saves a little bit of time. Um, so interestingly, it's it's funny. Uh, if you know, if you're familiar with the Tesla, you have a line along the top on the left side of the screen that shows in one direction how much power you're using and in the other direction how much regeneration you have. And if that line has uh, dots on it or is dotted towards the end of the line, that means you have a restriction. And interestingly, it was 76 degrees when I got in the car and it actually had about four dots on the regeneration side. So even though it's that warm, it gave a little restriction there, but it went away pretty quick. Also, since I was navigating to the supercharger here, um, it will precondition the battery and in this particular car here in the 2018 model 3 there is no heater in there and uh, there's the, the only heat comes basically from using electricity in the motors and so the battery warms naturally up a little bit and obviously the motors get warm but the motors are extremely efficient so there's not much heat produced and every time the preconditioning comes on, the battery preconditioning comes on, we can hear the motors whine. So I believe they're running the motors basically inefficient, probably out of phase or something. So that, because inefficiency means generating more heat. That's what happens in a gas car. That's why they get hot and that's why you gotta cool them because gas cars are so inefficient. They're only 20 to 30% efficient these electric motors are 90% efficient and don't produce much heat so they're running them inefficient I guess out of phase or something if you know comment down below how exactly they do that but yeah there is no heater in this that can preheat the battery and so it's always whining whenever it's preconditioning that's uh, kind of funny you can hear the motors whine but you never hear them otherwise well while just driving so kind of interesting so, yep, today we gotta go 220 miles at least before we get to the supercharger in Cedar Creek. So we gotta get every little drop of juice here. And then, oh, up there, this is a, I don't know if you can see that. Way up there, this is a, a glider. And it's got a motor on it. He's actually flying around up there. Huh. Uh, pretty cool. Um, oh, there's a second one coming too. There's two of those. <laughs> Interesting there. Yeah. Gliders, but with motors. Huh. Pretty cool. Yeah. So anyway, we got to get 220 miles. I mean, the car is rated at 310. So people automatically uh, automatically think oh yeah that's not a problem well it may be a problem because we may have to use uh, air conditioning actually where we're going the high is lower 
uh, today than what we have right now. Right now it's 76 here. The high in Bryce Canyon is actually only 74. So, but we may need air conditioning and high speeds may kill the range as always. Uh, elevation gain may kill the range. So we'll see. Um, I'm pretty sure we can make it 220 miles. Uh, if we don't go too fast, then that should be possible to do. Oh, back to the preheat. Um, our 2013 Tesla actually has a battery heater so it can precondition the battery using that battery heater so let me know um, if you know if your car whatever you're driving whatever EV you're driving if it has battery preconditioning and yeah leave a comment down below if you know how it does it uh, if it's a Tesla or if it's a, a Hyundai or whatever it is uh, let me know if it does battery preconditioning and if you know what it does or how it does let me know that too we made it 100 it still says two minutes remaining so i guess it's kind of pushing the last little bit in it's still going at eight kilowatts but it says 100 so um maybe we'll give it two more minutes and well then we'll take off for First, Cyan, we're driving through Cyan to get to Bryce.
Welcome to Bryce Canyon National Park. We made it. <laughs> Haven't seen a single EV. Actually, I'm lying. There was a Tesla coming out of the park as we went in. That was the only electric car I seen here. But, uh, well, let's look at this here. It is now 1025. So yeah, we got, we had about a good two and a half, three hours to get here. We're at 42%. I think it estimated 44. So we're doing good there. And then since last charge, we drove 129 miles already this morning, used 38 kilowatt hours at an average of 296. So it's a little gas guzzling <laughs> or uh, however, electron guzzling or whatever you want to call this. Huh? Um, it is uh, a lot of up and down elevation gain. So I think that has quite a bit something to do with it. It is only 66 degree here, so it's not really hot. Didn't really need heat or air conditioning. Um, but yeah, it's still used quite a bit. If we look at trip A here, we're actually for the total trip, we average 280. So today's trip up here at 296, we average more. So like I said, it's electron guzzling. And we already drove 1568 miles on this trip total. And we used 439 kilowatt hours total. So that's where we're at here. Um, oh, and another interesting thing. So this is the lifetime. Uh, we averaged 293. Today we averaged 296. So yeah, it's been guzzling pretty good. And uh, hopefully, on the way back to um, Cedar City. Hopefully that's more of a downhill ride and we use a lot less and we'll figure that out on the way back. So right now we're going here into the visitor center and then we got to figure out where we park. We actually missed the parking lot. There's a parking lot outside the park. I didn't know that um, where you can park and take the shuttle from there. So we got to look here in the visitor center. Maybe we drive back out and park there or drive in a little further if there is other parking in here don't know yet but uh, uh we definitely want to drive the shuttle bus or ride the shuttle bus uh there's quite a few cars going in the park so i'm sure there is uh too much traffic in here hardly any parking anywhere so we gotta go figure that out and then we'll go enjoy the park we went in and back out of the park <laughs> We came down here to this parking lot and that's the easiest place to park and take the shuttle from here. And uh, actually, I oh, can't show you, it's behind us there, just across the street. There is uh, the Best Western and they have charging, I think for $15. But uh, well, we are still at 43% and I did put in Cedar City and it tells me 16 percent from here to the supercharger expected arrival is 16 percent so uh i think we're taking that chance shouldn't be a problem um maybe i turn off uh the cabin temperature control thingy um maybe even sentry mode i don't think there's much going on out here and we're ways out at this point there's not many people parked here so it should be pretty safe and then we shouldn't have a problem making it to cedar city and now we'll go enjoy the park
to the car just in time it just started raining here there's some big old dark clouds coming in so we but we had it perfect no rain was uh, not even too hot here but anyway we are still at 44 percent here or actually we were at 42 it came up it charged itself or something i don't remember maybe it was 44 but anyways to see the city it says we should have 16 percent left so we're good to go it's 252 now and shows 85 degrees and uh well we're going to see the city here again at the Cedar City supercharger and oh it's already 18% we had 16 when we arrived we're going at 247 kilowatts basically full blast 250 is the max so we're doing over a thousand miles per hour charge right now we already put two kilowatt hours in and it's going super extra fast and uh, we just need to get uh, enough in to make it to St. George. But if we keep that speed up, but we definitely wait a little bit longer maybe. Um, <clears throat> since in St. George we have 150 kilowatt max. So we may as well take advantage of this super fast speed here. All right, much better today than yesterday. We got full blast. <laughs> yesterday it failed and we had to change uh, chargers so anyway the trip here from uh, Bryce Canyon was pretty interesting so let me explain here real quick so we were in uh, Bryce and we had 44% left and we set the navigation it said we would get here to the supercharger with 16% then we started driving and about 15 minutes into the drive we added a restaurant stop in Cedar City and I would said we get to that restaurant with 22% so that all made sense and we kept on driving and I wasn't familiar with this drive at all and uh, so it turned out Bryce Canyon is about 8,000 feet of elevation average and we had to drive over a pass that is almost 10,000 feet it was like 9,900 something so it was super high up there I didn't even know that so we were climbing even more elevation and so we got to the top of this pass and I look at my state of charge and it says 19% and I was like oh man we used a lot more than we should have and so I uh, scrolled down on the navigation to see what it says with what state of charge we would arrive Guess what it said? It said 
for the restaurant. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Now the freaking navigation is broken. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I mean, we were down to 19%. It still said 22 arriving at the restaurant, 16 arriving here. And it's like, this can't be real. Guess what happened? Well, if you're at 10,000 feet, you gotta come down. <laughs> so, <clears throat> oh look, there's a, we seen a, a guy with a horse yesterday. There's a couple horses today over that way. Huh. He's got a guy on the right, he's got a dog on the horse too. Well, anyway, um, so yeah. It still said 22, I thought maybe, I don't know, we didn't have a connection, there was no uh, LTE, so maybe this is the cause, I, I didn't know, but yeah, turns out it's going downhill, the car started regenerating, I know this guy in front of me was always on the brake, so he generated a lot of heat, and we generated a lot of electricity, it actually went up from 19 to 20, it went to 21, that was really cool. But then there was construction and we had to stop, unfortunately. That kind of sucked. And I uh, had to wait there for like 10 minutes at a light. And then we could get going again, but that used quite a bit of energy. It was almost kind of flat-ish right there. So we dropped again a percent. It's like, oh, darn. But then eventually it started going downhill again. And the sign said anywhere from four to 8% grade. And guess what? At the bottom of the hill, we rolled into town and we had 23% as we're rolling into town and we just had to go like, uh, I don't know, a half a mile or a mile or so and it dropped from 23 to 22 at the restaurant. <laughs> so the navigation was right on again. <clears throat> and I have experienced that many times with uh, Tesla's navigation that it is right on. If your driving style is overall staying the same as you're going no matter where what you're doing and if you're not aggressively driving and you're obeying the speed limit which we are either right on the speed limit or one or two miles per hour above according to our speedometer that's what we usually do <clears throat> and uh, then the navigation is right on most of the time so yeah, super surprising. We got here with 16% and miles from here, uh, almost, oh, this is like 20 some miles from here. Uh, we were down to, that's more than 20. That's almost 30 miles from here, I think. We were we were down to, to 19 and we're here with the 16. So this is pretty cool. Yep, so anyway, today we're getting great speeds here. I can hear the sounds like fans running inside the superchargers. So uh, these here are version three. They're liquid cooled, and so the liquid cooled ones they actually have a thinner cable than uh, the version twos that are not cooled. So um, yeah, but it seems like they're all working today. They're all busy from. The ones up here to the fourth and oh there's a another one that has the roof rack on it it's not just us um, yeah so anyway you can definitely make it to Bryce Canyon with an electric car we haven't seen many EVs there I seen a Model S charge at the Best Western Hotel um, we seen a Model 3 come out of the park we seen a Ionic 5 in the park and uh, at Bryce Point. And an interesting thing is, it looked like it had the lights on. There was nobody in the car, but it looked like the outer headlights were on, or at least maybe the signature lights, like that ring around it kinda was on. But there was nobody there. And we walked out to the viewpoint and came back maybe 15 minutes later. Still nobody there, still lights on. So I don't know if you're familiar with the Ionic 5, do you know why the lights would be on? I mean, I would assume if you leave the lights on, they would shut off automatically. Um, unless maybe the car is on, maybe you can leave the car on somehow so the air conditioning keeps going or something. I don't know. So with the Tesla, obviously, if the air conditioning keeps going, there's no lights, nothing on the outside. 
but I don't know, maybe he had to do some other trick to keep the air conditioning going. Do you know? Comment down below if you do. But anyway, uh, later we seen a Model Y and that was it. So not too many electric cars, but there are charging options, especially if you uh, spend the night there at hotels. That's the way to go, I guess. Or coming in from here, from Cedar City, it's not a big deal so we got the supercharger right here and there's an electrify america in town and so from here into the park is uh it's not too long of a distance so it's relatively easy to make and uh yeah but the park itself unfortunately does not offer any charging options at this point unlike cyan cyan has uh chargers at both visitor centers there's a, a, a visitor center at the south entrance and one at the north northwest entrance and they both have chargers even though the one at the north entrance um, that one was out of commission because of construction there they're remodeling the whole thing so but anyway um, maybe we need to go check here where we're at we should be doing pretty good. I mean, we were charging at over a thousand miles per hour. So that was doing pretty cool. Let's go see here real quick and check it out. Well, now we came way down. Uh, we are only at 108 or 9 here, but we're already up to 61%. So if we do the navigation here real quick, and let's see here where are we go and there let's see what it says so it says we could get there already with 54 percent so doing really good we'll get a little bit more here since we're already parked here so then i don't have to drive an extra detour necessarily to get to the 150 kilowatt charger <laughs> in St. George and uh, by the way we had really good food here in Cedar City yesterday at uh, Market Grill which is kind of an old-fashioned restaurant and today we were at the uh, uh, pub craft I think it was called and that was completely different this was more a modern style restaurant but again super great food so yeah, the Market Grill and the Pub Craft here in Cedar City are definitely two places to eat if you ever come through here. So, um, I guess at this point, there's not much to do here, kind of sucks. This guy is already taken off. He came in after us. Um, we're basically ready to go. Uh, oh, look at the car. I mean, I wonder if you can see this nastiness. Um, the car was pretty clean. I cleaned the windshield multiple times today. But there is just, uh, with these uh, storms coming through, <sighs> if we just get uh, all the dust and nastiness on. Actually here the back end has some reddish looking stuff on it. So yeah, we need to clean the car too. Uh, a lot of the recordings are with a dirty windshield. I'm sorry, but it just... Uh, was impossible to keep clean so I guess we get going at this point to a nice model X just pulled in obviously I love the blue color no doubt about it blue is just beautiful so uh, yeah I guess we'll go on and uh, see if we can make it to st. George And uh, 
I wanted to do stats and look at the uh, stats from the drive this morning until Cedar City and I don't know I was too excited in Cedar City for some reason and forgot about the stats I'm sorry because yeah I wanted to look at these and uh, see how we did going from St. George through Zion to Bryce and back to Cedar City but I messed that one up sorry and now all we can see is 51 miles since Cedar City 9 kilowatt hours and 170 watt hours per mile holy crap I think uh, somebody was pushing us <laughs> um, so far we drove and on this trip a total of 1707 miles used 464 kilowatt hours and we averaged 272 watt hours per mile so we're doing all right here with the average since the lifetime average is 293 um, but yeah it's too bad I really wanted to know what our uh, stats were for Bryce Canyon and back to Cedar City unfortunately I missed that one uh, for tomorrow we don't know what we're doing yet um, since there is still a uh, problem in Cyan with the narrows where you walk up to the, the creek basically um, they had a flush flood a couple days ago and search and rescue is still in there trying to find a missing person so that kind of sucks that sucks for uh, the people that uh, are related or friends of that missing person and that sucks for everybody that would like to walk the narrows and there's been some thunderstorms and rain on and off here so um, yeah so I guess we're not gonna get to do that so we're not sure what we're doing tomorrow we'll figure it out currently we are at 59 percent and it's 87 degrees so it's not even that hot right now here in St. George but uh, so yeah don't know what we're doing tomorrow <laughs> we'll have to look and see maybe we'll go around town a little bit again like we did the other day um, actually we uh, scoped out the house of a, uh, a youtuber um, then uh, he's got uh, what's inside and what's inside family and uh, I don't know somehow we got around to watching that at some point a couple years ago and um, they have uh, electric cars they have some Teslas and stuff um, and uh, they built the home and so we wanted to go see that and we did that and uh, so we're not sure what we're doing now it's uh, 7 30 now I guess we're going uh, early in and uh, don't know maybe we sleep in we get up early depending on what we come up with tonight for what we want to do tomorrow and then the day after we got to get on the way back and on the way back we want to stop in Salt Lake City at Ikea so we want to start super extra early on uh, Wednesday morning so that we can spend probably an hour or two at uh, Ikea and possibly purchase uh, we need a closet for my daughter so she's been looking at those and um, well they kind of keep coming in then they sell out she's got a couple of them that she looks at but uh, we're not even sure that they have it or not and we would have to load it on top here that's why we still got the roof rack on uh, just in case we need to strap some boxes up there from Ikea and take that home and actually Salt Lake is uh, one of the closest to us it would either be Salt Lake Portland or Seattle they're all about 500 miles or so away from home all right so I guess that's it for today and uh, well I'll let you know tomorrow what's going on good night we ended up spending the day in and around St. George. We went to snowy 
Canyon State Park. There's no snow there, but that's what they call it. It was pretty cool. They had slot canyons to walk in, lava tubes to get underground in, and some sand dunes there. So pretty cool. And then we went back to town, had some decent lunch there at a little restaurant that was really tasty. And then walked around town a little more, exploring downtown. And uh, at some point we rented some electric scooters again to make it back to the car. So it was a pretty fun day. The day went by really quick and we had to get back to the resort and start packing and getting ready for the next day and uh, making sure we can get up plenty early so we can be in Salt Lake as soon as possible to go to Ikea. So this is it for this video and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. So we'll have the last video coming our 900 miles driving back home and this time we'll be using the supercharger network. Don't forget to go down into the description and click the link to our Redbubble store and go check out our t-shirts and other things that we have for sale there. This is another way you can support our channel. Well, in any event, thank you for watching. Goodbye.